Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Tuesday message of hope. My name's Helen Azer, and it's my joy to be with you this week to share reflections and devotions from uh, looking at the names of God. And I don't know about you, but names are so powerful, aren't they? They convey something about the person that you're talking to. It's either their identity or their role or the way in which they want you to address them, which talks about the level of relationship that you can have with them. And it's the same in the Bible, that when God reveals his name or his names to his people, he's conveying the way in which he wants them to relate to him. So what's our name of God for this morning? Well, it's this word El Roy, El Roy, and it basically means the strong one who sees you, the strong one who sees you. I just think it's very powerful to reflect on the fact that we are not invisible to our God. It's not irrelevant to him where we are, how we're doing, what condition we're in, how we're feeling, what matters to us. And God says, I see you. I see you. And my encouragement to you today is whatever else you have heard in your spirit, whatever else the enemy, the accuser has wanted to say over your life, be aware today that your God sees you. He not only sees you, but it matters to him where you are and it matters to him that you know that he sees you. Where do we get this name of God in the scriptures? Well, actually, it's a name that only comes up once in the scriptures and it comes up in the story in Genesis chapter 16, where we read about Hagar. Remember, Abraham was due to have a child, but had been a long time without giving birth without being able to conceive and Sarah his wife and finally Sarah gets a little bit uh, agitated with the delay in them having kids and she goes off and she finds Hagar the servant girl the Egyptian servant girl and brings her for Abraham to sleep with and Abraham has a child through Hagar Ishmael and further down the line, Hagar becomes a little bit too proud that she has given birth and Sarah hasn't. And Sarah is incredibly uh, mean towards her and persecutes her and basically sends her off into the wilderness and says, I don't want to see you or your son ever again and becomes very jealous of her. And so here we pick up the story in Genesis chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. And we find Hagar in a desperate state out in the wilderness, no provision, um, desperate for just a drink of water, crying out for help. Um, and with a, a young son who's now a boy sitting under a tree um, and desperate, really feeling like they're never going to make it through. And in the middle of their trauma, in the middle of their crisis, in the middle of feeling like they've been forgotten and nobody sees their plight God shows up on the scene and speaks to Hagar and he says this she Hagar gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her you are the God who sees me she said for I have now seen the one who sees me that is why this well that appeared in the desert was called Beer Lahai Roy the well of the living one who sees me. I just think that's so beautiful, the picture that we see there. Not only did God show up and personally speak to Hagar in her distress, but he also provided for her needs. In the midst of the wilderness where she was, desperate for water, he provides her with a well, the living source of, of water, if you like, that is going to sustain her, but is also going to literally give her and her son her her life back in the midst of her desperation. The powerful picture that we have here is of a, a servant girl, an Egyptian servant girl at that. She wasn't even of the chosen people of Israel, the chosen people of God at the time, but God sees her. God sees her and doesn't exclude her, doesn't push her out, doesn't confront her with her sin for sleeping with Abraham, doesn't speak of her mistakes that she's made for being proud. Or, But no, he meets her where she is and he speaks to her and he says, Hagar, you matter to me. I see you. And he reveals himself as the strong one who sees her plight. And I believe God wants to encourage us this summer 
that as we spend time with him, as we reflect with him, as we pour out our hearts to him and perhaps talk to him about this season, this strange season that we still find ourselves in, where maybe we're crying out and saying, God, I don't know what to do about certain situations, maybe family relationships, maybe a need for provision, maybe a need for a job. Maybe you've been through this crisis of COVID and come out and you're just thinking, I don't know my direction in life. I feel a little bit like Hagar. I'm out in the wilderness and I don't know where my compass is and it even feels like the very life flow of who I am has been lost. God would speak into that confusion. God would speak into that loss. God would speak into every area where you are asking him to be your God in this season and he would say, I hear you and I see you. I see you. You are not invisible to me. You matter to me. I am your God who sees you. And not only that, but I am the God who is the strong one who sees you. Why is it important that he reveals himself not only as seeing, but as being strong? It's because in seeing, he always acts. God doesn't just see, observe, tick the box and say noted. But he says, how can I meet the need that I see? In fact, when we come to the name of God that is Jehovah Jireh in the scriptures, literally we translate that as the God who provides, which is absolutely right. But within that picture of the God who provides, it says it's actually the God who sees and meets the need. So as God provides, the the prerequisite, if you like, of his provision is always that he has first seen us. It's interesting if you do a study on this, but the number of times that this little phrase comes up in the Bible, the eyes of the Lord. And it highlights that the eyes of the Lord are always open, always watching, always observing, always looking out for his people. Second Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Again, that picture of the eyes and strength together, that when God sees, he is the strong one who has the power to act upon that which he sees and to meet our needs. Psalm 33 and verse 18, the eyes of the Lord are upon even the weakest worshippers who love him, those who wait in hope and expectation for the strong, steady love of God. That's Psalm 33, verse 18 from the Passion Translation. The eyes of the Lord are upon you today. Even if you're feeling weak, even if your heart is just a tiny bit for him, he's there for you. For those who wait in hope and expectation, he is the strong one whose steady love will meet the need that he sees. Psalm 32 and verse 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. He is the God who has his eye upon you today. He is El Roi, the one who sees you. He watches over you is the other expression that we find in the Bible. Psalm 121 verses 5 to 8 from the New Living Translation, it says this, the Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and as you go, both now and forever. What a powerful sense that almighty God, the one whom we explored yesterday is the creator of the universe, is so personal that he would watch over you and over me, in our coming and in our going, in our every day, in the needs that we have, whether it's shade by day from the heat of what life throws at us, or whether it's that protective watching of a father who tends for us, who watches when we sleep at night. He watches over you. Then when we come to the New Testament, it says Jesus saw people. He saw Nathaniel under the tree and called him. He saw the disciples and I often think to myself, I wonder what Jesus saw when he called people. It says he saw Simon Peter and called him. He saw Andrew and called him. 
What would Jesus see if he looked upon you today? That's a fantastic thought, isn't it? He sees you. He's not indifferent to you. He sees, he watches, he cares. And then he moves and acts to meet your need. Matthew 9 and verse 36 from the New Living Translation says, And when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus is seeing, God's seeing is always coupled with that compassionate, loving heart that cannot but meet the need of his children. When God sees, he's moved to action. And when he is moved to action, he is the strong one in whose power is everything needed to change our circumstances. Just like Hagar, you might feel like you're in the wilderness today, but let me encourage you. God sees you. God sees you. He is El Royi, the one who sees you and is strong and able to meet your need. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you that you reveal yourself even to the weakest among us, as El Roy, the one, the strong one who sees us. Thank you that your word says your eyes are roaming the land, looking for us, that you watch over us, that your tender heartedness watches to take care of us and to meet our every need. So today, Father, I pray for each one of us that we would see again, as Hagar did, have our eyes opened to see the one who sees us, that, as it were, our eyes might meet, our gaze might meet, and that we might be captivated again by your loving kindness as you gaze upon us. Father, may we see you as you see us and as you share with us who you are. Lord, where we've seen you as harsh or maybe where we've seen you as indifferent, we ask, Lord, that you would correct our vision that we might see clearly in these days. Thank you, Father, that you care for us. Thank you that right now you are seeing people who are watching this today. You are seeing their need for friendship. I just really feel that for some of you where you feel so lonely. God says, I see you and I'm with you and I'm the strong one who is moving on your behalf. Father, I thank you that you see those who are sick and isolated today and that you come to them and you meet their need for healing. I pray, Father, for those who need your provision today, that you are Jehovah Jireh, who sees a need and provides for it. And Father, as we come into this summer season, we pray that you would continue to watch over us. Watch over us as we rest. Watch over us as we have time with friends and family. Be that guest in our midst, Father. Be the one who is welcome in our midst, watching over us each day. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. May God richly bless you today. May you enjoy the rest of your day and be aware of God's eyes watching you and lovingly tending for you. Amen.